Let's walk on the street. I have a special guest, Trey Gowdy. He's from South Carolina, Congressman, Republican. A week ago, Tuesday, he figured in prominently to a House Judiciary Committee hearing that really, in my opinion, was more about the Constitution than anything else and some surprising facts. Welcome, Congressman. Hey, thank you for having me. Listen, I guess, listen, I'm a strict constitutionalist. To, to think that the origination clause uh, may be an issue with regard to how the Ob Obamacare uh, Affordable Care Act came about or the notion that we see issues like immigration, election laws being dealt with from a, uh, an executive order scenario or all these agencies that have become the fourth branch of government without any checks and balances. The hearing hit on all of these. Can you explain what went on and why to somebody like me it was, gave me such agita? Uh, well, what's going on is whether it's immigration or the Affordable Care Act or mandatory minimums or frankly the hearing we're having right now in judiciary with respect to asylum requests, uh, what, what good is it to have a legislative body that passes a law if the executive branch is free to ignore the law? And part of the discussion is the difference between prosecutorial discretion, which is a prosecutor on an individual case basis saying I don't have enough evidence to prosecute this case, and just the wholesale ignoring of, of laws that are, number one, constitutional, and number two, have been fully funded. The Affordable Care Act's a perfect example. The president went to the Supreme Court for the court to tell us that law was constitutional, and the funding is 80-something percent mandatory, but yet he is deciding which portions of that law to turn on and turn off. And to me, as a fellow constitutionalist, it really doesn't have anything to do with politics. I would love to be able to ask a Republican chief executive or a Republican attorney general why he or she is not enforcing the law. It, it, to me, it's more about our system of government than it is the vicissitudes of elections. You know, Congressman, the most disturbing aspect of all is I think there are issues here. I'm not a lawyer, but I paid close attention. But after listening to all the legal experts uh, from Georgetown, George Washington University, whether it was uh, Professor Turley, Rosencrantz, Lazarus, what they all arrived at is there's no way to get it in front of a court or it's very difficult to get standing on these issues. Your thoughts in the final 20 seconds? Yeah, there are a couple of ways that Congress can remedy this. Uh, one is to go to court and sue, and, and, and the Supreme Court, for whatever reason, has said that members of Congress don't have standing. Obviously, there are funding uh, uh, remedies that we have. The ultimate remedy, of course, is impeachment, which some of the witnesses brought up. But the, the really important remedy is elections. And if your viewers think that, that the balance is tilted more towards the executive branch and away from the legislative, they need to correct that uh, come next November. Well, listen, thank you for taking the time, and there's never enough time. I, I think in the end, to be fair as well, a lot of these infractions have happened under the current administration, but the executive branch getting stronger has been an ongoing phenomenon for quite a while. Thank you for taking Amen. the time today, sir. Carl, back to you. Thanks a lot.